Where did all the visual novels go? Visual novels have always been a weird genre of games. What I assume is due to their simplicity, they've been around for forever. And yet, they've never really broken into the mainstream in the same way that other niche topics such as anime or other genres of games eventually did. In a world where even my grandma knows what Call of Duty and One Punch Man are, VNs seem almost like a relic of the past, a reminder of what once was instead of what still could be. I mean, just take a look back at the 90s and mid-2000s to see my point. Internet forums used to be filled with talks of Steins Gate, Ace Attorney, Higurashi, Muvla, and Fate Stay Night for crying out loud. Today, while yes, Ace Attorney is still going strong doing the same exact thing, all of the other series I just mentioned either abandoned the medium or faded away entirely. And what of their successors, the heirs to this once forgotten yet grand kingdom? My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Now, that example was a little bit uncharitable towards modern visual novels. There have been at least a few genuinely good and breakout VNs of the last decade. But, uh, I Love You, Colonel Sanders is emblematic of what I think has been a growing trend within the genre. That being the oversaturation of jokes, low-end dating sims, and that weird shit that Steam won't stop recommending me at 4am. The question of why, or maybe even if this is happening, has been something that's on my mind for a while now. Usually genres don't just fade away or die, they disappear for a reason. So maybe visual novels had some fatal flaw that doomed them to irrelevance, or maybe I'm the one missing something. Are visual novels a dying genre? And if so, why? Before we embark on this journey together, I want to be transparent. Most of this video is conjecture. It does pain me to say that, considering that I've now done a hilarious amount of research on this topic, but as it turns out, trying to find conclusive and, most importantly, English research on porn games is harder than I originally thought. I get it! I don't get it! So, as usual, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Unfortunately for me, the first section of this video is also the one that would benefit the most from hard data. That being the section where I try to convince you that graphs go like this. Let's start off by trying to clear something up. Dying is a term that, while good for a YouTube title, brings with it a lot of connotations. This is especially true in the video game industry, where a new game appears to be dying every hour on the hour. The real answer that I'm trying to find is, have visual novels been on the decline? And while most of my sources had some level of conflicting information, one thing that they could all seemingly agree on are that visual novels are not as well off as they used to be during the early to mid 2000s. Multiple big name companies within the industry, such as Minori or Light, have gone bankrupt within the last couple years. This isn't to mention that it's been quite a while since the industry has had a new major hit, leaving only nostalgia for the older series to carry the genre. Steins Gate, Higurashi, and Fate are the most recent visual novel anime adaptations, and all of them are from series that started over a decade ago. So there, Graph do indeed go like this. Exactly how steep of a decline and when it started is where that conflicting information starts to come up and the speculation as to why this is happening is something I want to discuss over the rest of this video. So with the long prelude out of the way, it's time to start asking the deep philosophical question of why Graf said. As it turns out, visual novels really have been around for forever. The first one that I could reliably find documented being this title that would get me demonetized back in the early 80s. As the title of that game would imply, VNs have seemingly always had a tendency for, uh, niche content. Even at its early stage, the affinity for visual novels to be turned into dating sims was also clear, a trend that continues to this day. However, back in those days, it seemed that there was also a trend for a lot of experimentation. Genres such as mystery, sci-fi, and action were often explored. 
VNs actually have a really open-ended nature of be a story with some pretty pictures, and a lot of game devs were seemingly able to make their creativity run wild with such a flexible premise. On top of just flexibility, one of the reasons that I heavily assume VNs were popular during this era was the relatively low barrier to entry into the then new and exciting video game industry. Now, I am not a game dev, and I'm sure something as complex and downright beautiful as Police Knots was not easy to make. But for the sake of argument, let's say that you're an aspiring filmmaker by the name of, oh, I don't know, Kirio Hojima, and you really wanted to try making a video game with little to no experience on how to actually do that. In that case, something like a visual novel might actually sound really appealing. VNs can serve as an important gateway from other fields of study, such as writing, into the world of games. But if that is the case, visual novels may have gotten less and less important as the industry naturally evolved. As people got more familiar with games, and as the tools to help other people get into the industry became more accessible, maybe visual novels lost an important function that they once held within the industry. And it's this particular issue, the idea that visual novels are right at the crossroads between games, novels, and anime, that might actually be the genre's Achilles heel that I've been searching for. Let me ask you a question. Who exactly is the audience for a visual novel? VNs have always been a niche within a niche, but what exactly that outer niche is is up for debate. The two most obvious candidates are weebs and gamers, but each of them has a major limiting factor when it comes to being in the VN strike zone. Let's start off with the most oppressed group of all, gamers. It makes sense that people that play games might also play visual novels. Visual novels are sold on Steam, not Bookwalker after all. I mean, everyone agrees that visual novels are games, right? The criticism that some games do not have enough mechanics to be called games is not a new idea. This criticism has historically been thrown at what the community likes to call walking simulators, such as Gone Home and What Remains of Edith Finch. And while I don't fully agree with this take, I understand why it's stuck to the ends. Visual novels are a story first and a game second, if at all. And even I would be confused if a Kindle version of a choose your own adventure book won Game of the Year. But what if that Kindle book was bundled with a copy of Anime Minesweeper? What if the Anime Minesweeper was more of a dungeon crawler, and to fit the novel's themes it had pseudo permadeath? And just like a classic visual novel, the story would change based on your decisions in the- Oh shit. Is Hades a visual novel? Because if so, that's gonna cause me to go on a whole entire tangent, and I'm already weeks behind on that. For those unfamiliar, Hades is a masterpiece of a game made by Supergiant Games back in 2018. On top of being the best game in its release year, it's often compared to a visual novel due to its heavy emphasis on story in a genre that often has little to none. But that comparison has always struck me as a little odd. I mean, sure, Hades does have a branching narrative that changes based on your choices, and it also has several love interests that you can chase after. But so does Skyrim, and yet I refuse to believe that it was Todd Howard's secret plan to revive the VN genre through The Elder Scrolls V. As mentioned earlier, VNs are only really defined as a story with some pretty pictures, so games, especially RPGs, could all be visual novels if you squint hard enough. Most discussions on genre devolve into this hell, where Inuyasha is an isekai and hot dogs are sandwiches. Unfortunately for visual novels, they live in this hell. As I've already talked about, visual novels exist right on that boundary between a whole bunch of different mediums. You can often run into games like The Somnium Files, Danganronpa, Three Houses, or Hades that really make you question what a visual novel even is. If it's an art style, then Fire Emblem, especially those past Awakening, should all be visual novels. If VNs don't have gameplay fail states, then Danganronpa and Ace Attorney aren't VNs. Are the books inside of Skyrim visual novels? If you count most, or god forbid, all of these as VNs, then perhaps the genre isn't even dying. 
it's just been evolving. To try and reel us back into the original topic of this section, gamers probably aren't the main audience for VNs. The term visual novel itself has possibly become outdated within the community, and is really only used to describe a small portion of what the genre has to offer. That is, if there are games at all, and not just, and I quote, for sad, lonely people that like hentai porn. Speaking of... I watch Asian cartoons I'm a weeaboo Perhaps the most obvious audience of novels of the visual variety are those of the anime fandom. And as mentioned before, this connection is both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, the anime community is probably the closest thing to a consistent fanbase that visual novels will have. I doubt that anyone who has been inside of the community for a while would deny that visual novels are, or at least were, a part of the culture. Mainly because, as mentioned in the intro, VNs used to be a very popular medium to draw source material from for anime and manga. But it's those same exact strong ties to the anime community that limit the genre, at least here in the West. Here in my good old home of America, anything that looks like this brings with it certain connotations, most being unfairly negative. Garugamesh! This is why I also didn't even bring up the possibility of people that just like books into one of the audience groups. Joe Schmo over here that really enjoys reading steampunk novels in his free time might actually really enjoy the gritty world of something like What a Beautiful People. But he takes one look at the cat girl and immediately throws it into the category of that weird shit my little cousin likes. This perception issue might go away on its own as anime becomes more mainstream. But steam being flooded with this instead of this doesn't really help. While we're on the topic of the West, I want to spend some time talking about another issue that only affects it in regards to VNs, localization. VN localization efforts have noticeably been dragging behind when compared to anime, manga, and even light novels. VN fans still have to wait years, or sometimes forever, for even established companies to officially translate their novels. This is likely because translation can really be a costly venture, especially for something with the word count of a VN. Trying to translate hundreds of thousands of words while trying to keep the author's true intentions, while also simultaneously dealing with things that don't have direct translations, is rough. The only reason translations get done in any field is because companies think that it's a worthwhile venture, but the West has really never been seen as a suitable market for selling visual novels. If you paid attention to what I've just said, this is where the fun begins. Why are visual novels not popular in the West? Because no one bothers to localize them for the West. Why does no one localize them for the West? Because they're not popular in the West. Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. But that's not the real issue. If they've never been seen as popular, then why are they decreasing now? Well, while it's anecdotal, back in ye olden days, anime fans would devour anything that was vaguely anime related. If that meant waiting four years for a visual novel they had barely heard of to be dubiously translated by a fan group, then so be it. But today we live in a society with Netflix, Amazon, and Crunchyroll. It's not just that VN localization stagnated, it's that every other medium within the anime community kept moving forward. Humans often take the path of least resistance, and visual novels are almost never that. Why would anyone that's not me learn how to mount an ISO file, then use Google Translate for 20 minutes on an installation program just so you can play a porn game, when you could, you know, just watch the anime? To try and answer the question that I originally set out to, traditional visual novels do seem to be on the decline as a whole. It might be because they once served a purpose that is no longer needed, or maybe their audience was always just too niche and fractured. In the West, while other industries are flourishing like never before, VN localization stays trapped in a cycle of never-ending stagnation. Now, whether a decline really counts as dying is up for debate especially when visual novel light games seem to be doing quite well for themselves. To end this weird video off on a happy note, the other thing that I can say for certain is that whether or not they're dying, the visual novel scene is not dead yet. While not as important as it used to be, they still do serve their purpose as an entryway for other aspiring writers to dip their toes into games. 
And while we still don't have an official translation of Fate Stay Night, we do have fantastic indies such as Valhalla and Dream Daddies, so it's not all bad. Oh, we even have Telltale Games, one of the rare Western studios that- You can't keep getting away with it! While I would personally like it if visual novels one day became a genre popular enough to warrant localization, I think I'm fine with it staying this weird little niche thing that I love for now. That's good news.